And welcome back to the world tonight. Joining me now is Kate Schindel. She is the president of the Actors Equity Association. And we want to talk about diversity on Broadway. As many of you know, Broadway, like every other industry in this country, has felt the pain of COVID-19. This pandemic has wreaked havoc on everybody, including the actors and those who are behind the scenes working on Broadway. Now that things are opening back up, the question remains, how do you bring more diversity, how do you bring more racial equity to the stages of Broadway? And Kate, you've been working in this industry, you've been the president of the equity for since uh, 2015, if I'm not mistaken, and you represent a national labor union that represents more than 51,000 professional actors and stage managers. And personally, I don't know how you do it all since you are an actress, you're a singer, and you're a dancer. You have a lot of energy. But how are you applying that energy right now to the cause of getting through the pandemic and also for the cause of bringing more racial equity and diversity to Broadway? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. And thank you for your generosity in calling me a dancer. I'm not sure that <laughs> I'm not sure that I really deserve that title, uh, but I have, in fact, moved in time to music in front of people. Um, you know, <laughs> COVID changed a lot of things. Uh, equity members, and as you mentioned, there are about 51,000 actors and stage managers who are members of equity all across the country in markets of all sizes, had record employment in 2019 and went to 100% unemployment in 2020. Obviously, we work in a discipline where social distancing is really not a thing, whether you're partnering or passing props back and forth or, you know, going to work and kissing your coworker as a condition of doing your job. And then, you know, the other part of our industry that made it especially uniquely challenging is that it requires gathering large groups of people in confined spaces, usually indoors, to watch. So um, it's been said so many times that we were the first to shut down and would be among the last to come back. But thankfully, things are coming back and have been for several months. But during the pause, uh, during the time when we all had a lot of time to sit and reflect and pay attention to what was going on elsewhere in the world, but also in our industry, um, we had to start thinking about what kind of business we wanted to come back to. What would, would the Broadway or the theatrical industry that reopened look the same as the one that closed down in March of 2020? And it became very clear to anyone who was paying attention that although we had been talking about and we're continuing to talk about more diversity and inclusion, better representation, fewer barriers to access. We had to really get serious as an industry, as a union, and as individuals about taking action, concrete steps um, to ensure that that happened. So yes, that work has been going on, and I can uh, I can tell you more about pieces of it, depending on what you're interested in. Absolutely. You recently spoke, uh, or at least I caught one of your speeches before the National Press Club here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And at that time, you discuss uh, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, yeah. Breonna Taylor, and you were saying their names and you were talking about the fact there are just too many names that have become victims of uh, police shootings or racially motivated crimes. And you also stated that the equity has to do something about white supremacy uh, and making sure that Broadway reflects a more diverse group of people. How have you done that thus far, uh, specifically? Well, I think the first step, and one that is hard for many people, is recognizing that institutions like ours were created on a foundation that is not free of white supremacy, because America is not free of white supremacy. Um, I think that one of the things that we focused on most and have been focusing on are what are the what are the barriers to people entering our industry and then what do they confront when they get into our industry are we creating a welcoming space a supportive space are we giving people access to even you know get in the front door are there enough job opportunities and and that's not necessarily 
specifically up to the union, but we can advocate for it for people who don't look like me or who didn't grow up in privilege. You know, that's obviously just one component of making sure that we have a more inclusive industry. We also uh, have been doing what we call the diversity and inclusion retrofit at equity, looking inward at every corner of our own union and governance and, um, like overhauling our committee system, for example, to limit the the number of sort of power centers that any one person can have, to make room for new voices, to give people a chance to be leaders and learn to be leaders who haven't gotten the chance to be leaders in the past. Um, so, you know, th- there, there have been a, just a number of really exciting initiatives, and we know we're not done. We launched an open access program to make it easier for people to join our union if they have worked professionally, meaning gotten paid as an actor or stage manager somewhere in the live theater. Previously, you had to work an equity contract in order to join equity, and those contracts are controlled by our employers whose hiring biases and hiring practices are not necessarily diverse and inclusive. So by taking that step out, by giving the agency to the individual artists themselves, rather than making them wait for an employer to pick them, we felt like it would would, uh, erase some of the barriers to access that have existed. Absolutely. And Kate, uh, in, the, in the limited time I have left, I've got about 30 seconds left. It, it, it sounds like you're doing the, 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 the great work to at least open the door and keep it busting open so that people of color and those marginalized can come into the space of Broadway and diversify it. And we all benefit by that. But in the 30 seconds I have left, $919 billion is what this industry produces uh, around the United States. Out of that, there can be a lot of funding for people of color to become successful uh, in, in Broadway, not only in front of the stage, on the stage, but behind the scenes as well. Is that something you see in the future and, and will it work? I certainly hope so, because the way to increase diversity and inclusion in the theater is not to create unpaid internships for people with marginalized identities. It's to give them access, to give them fair compensation, to um, not require them to come from a background of privilege in order to be able to even get in at the ground level. So I, I think this is achievable. It is a collective effort and it will have to continue to be, but we are committed to doing our part. I like how you put that because you're talking about it's achievable. So if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. Kate Schindel, I appreciate you coming on to talk about diversity on Broadway and, and, and great success in your future as well. President of Actors Equity Association, Kate Schindel, joining us tonight on The World Tonight. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to see you too. We'll be back with more in a moment. 